Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. A while ago I did a video about using a chisel bevel up or bevel down and I started a bunch of arguments with that which I really enjoy. So today I thought I'd take that one step farther and do a video about bevel up versus bevel down hand planes. Now there are a whole bunch of arguments that will start with this but I hope to dispel some of those because I'm actually going to show them in use today and explain some of the differences between them. So let's dive in and take a look at this one. So first let's talk a little bit about history. Where did these come from and where did the idea of a bevel up and bevel down plane come from? Now throughout most of history, almost all planes have been beveled down. That's with a higher angle bed angle. And so most of them are about 45 degrees seems about right. And this is the way it was for hundreds of years. Now people did make bevel up low angle planes for one reason or another, but 99.9% .9 of all planes were bevel down high angle planes. And so when metal body planes started coming around with the Bailey and others, they kept with that same bevel down high angle plane. It's what people were used to, it was the understanding, and it was the plane that pretty much every person had. And that's why pretty much all the hand planes are bevel down high angle planes. That's just what people had. Well then Stanley introduced the Stanley number 62, which is a bevel up low angle plane and the angle of the plane rather than being at 45 degrees is dropped all the way down to about 12 degrees and that allows the plane iron itself to be more in line with the cutting which cuts down on vibration and makes it a little bit smoother and so this really seems like a, a step up but one of the interesting things is when they came out with the 62 it was advertised for cleaning up butcher blocks and butcher blocks mostly have end grain sticking up and they're large surfaces with end grain. And one of the downsides with that is if you have a bevel down high angle plane, as it goes across all that end grain sticking up, it's going to eventually want to chatter if it's not really sharp and really well set up. The blade will want to wiggle across the work and that makes them a little bit less functional. Whereas with a low angle bevel up plane, the blade isn't going to wiggle across the work because it is at such a low angle, it's going to slice through the work. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So these were intended for butcher blocks or other ingrain applications. Now they did make other planes that were low angle bevel up. A lot of the block planes are low angle bevel up. A lot of the shooting board planes, the weird ones that are shaped odd and have the handle on the side and they look weird, a lot of those have a bevel up low angle plane. And that's because when you're working on a shooting board, you're often doing a lot of end grain work. So fast forward through the years and hand tools tend to disappear and power tools become the dominant way of doing things. And contrary to popular belief, I really don't have a problem with that. I have spent more time with power tools than I have with hand tools. But over the last 10 to 15 years, we've seen people trying to slow down and enjoy the sport a little bit more. And that's where the hand tools have started to come back into vogue. But because of that, people are coming out of this power tool mindset. And we talked about that earlier with the bevel up versus bevel down. It makes far more sense to keep the bevel up, keep the iron low and slice the fibers. Whereas if you turn it beveled down, you go at a weird angle and it just feels weird to push the chisel through the work this way. And that's one of the big differences between the power tool mindset and the hand tool mindset. Or I, I think I wish I would change that to the hybrid mindset because there really isn't a hand tool word worker anymore. Everyone has a bit of power tool in their background now. And so because of that, the power tool woodworkers coming into the hand tool world really liked the low angle bevel up plane and these started to take off with more people wanting them. The problem was Stanley only made a few number 62s. They weren't that common, at least especially in comparison to all of the other beveled down high angle planes. There weren't a lot of these and the price went from 50, 60 bucks a piece up to 200, 300 and now I've seen some of these going for up to $400 for the antique number 62 low angle planes. And there have been several other companies that have made it. This is the new Stanley Sweetheart, which is the one that I use. It's actually a rather nice plane and uh, for the money you you can't beat that. All that to be said, there is a lot of history that goes into this and there is a lot of personal choice that comes back and forth. But now I actually want to take a look at the planes themselves and see what are the specific differences between them and what can we learn from that. 
So first, let's look at the traditional high angle bevel down plane. When we take this out, the first big difference is that there's a chip breaker on here. It's a piece of steel on the back, and this does two things. Number one, it thickens the steel and, and supports it, but number two, it actually breaks the curl. As it comes up, it hits the chip breaker and wants to curl up and crush into itself. This compresses the fibers ahead of the cut, and in doing so, it can really help you with tear out and going through difficult grains. So you have a chip breaker on one of these planes. Number two, you have a frog. This is the bed that the iron sits on. And one of the nice things about that is you can move the frog backward and forward to change the orientation and change the size of the cut. You can also change the angle of the frog by getting a different frog but having a separate frog makes the bed adjustable. There are a bunch of other things that are slightly different with the levers and depth adjuster and that type of thing, but for the most part, from that point on, they're kind of the same. They both have a cutting edge and they slice through the work. So then we come over here to the low angle plane. Now in the low angle plane, we don't have a chip breaker, we just have an iron. And the reason we don't have a chip breaker is that the bevel is on top, so you can't actually have a chip breaker that comes up over the bevel and then will create that breaking edge right there. Also, because of this, the bed is so low that the bed is integrated into the plane. It's all one unit. So most of the time what happens is that with the low angles, you actually have an adjustable mouth, so you can open and close the mouth as opposed to moving the frog backward and forward. Some of the newer high angle bevel down planes um, actually also have that adjustable mouth, like this Veritas custom plane, which is one of my favorite planes. But one of the really nice things about a low angle bevel up plane is that there is no chip breaker and everything goes together much easier. There aren't, there aren't a lot of adjustments on here. It's just a simple thing. You drop in the blade, you adjust its depth and its angle, and it's all done with this one little lever back here doing the Norris adjuster, that it goes really quickly. There's, there's less to figure out on this than there is on one of these. So this brings us back to the age old question of should I make something that is more complicated but is more adjustable and confinable, or should I make something that is simpler, easier to set up, has less problems, but it's a little bit more locked into what it does? And in all honesty, that's really a personal question because that kind of comes down to all of the other things. Do you prefer Apple or do you prefer Windows? Um, there, there are a lot of things along that line that you happen in life that you have to kind of decide, do you want something more customizable or do you want something a little bit more reliable? One of the other things you can do with a low angle plane is you can quickly change out the iron. So in this right now, I have a 25 degree iron. So 25 plus the 12 degree, this has a 27 and a half degree angle of cut. Or I could put in a 50 degree iron in here and that would be 62. So it would be the cutting angle plus the bed angle brings me to a 62. And so we'll be talking about what the use for that is. But one of the customizable things with this is you can actually change out the iron to change the angle of attack. With a traditional plane, you really can't change the angle of attack. Now, you can get different frogs and switch those out. And for my Veritas customizable plane, I actually have a few different frogs. It takes a good bit more work. You have to take a bunch of screws out. You have to take the plane apart. You switch out the frog, and you can change the angle. But for most of the time, you really can't change the angle on these without doing a lot of work to them. Where that really comes into great use is something like this where I have reversing and swirling grain. There's a lot of twist in here and there's actually a little bit of curl in this white oak. This is an incredibly difficult wood to work with. But with this low angle bevel up plane, it's leaving a good bit of tear out on here. And you can actually hear it kind of crunching as it were, cuts through the wood. There's just a lot of tear out being left in here. And that's because the blade is actually getting underneath the fibers, lifting up the fibers, and the fibers are breaking ahead of the cutting action. And without a chip breaker on there to compress it, those fibers will then break off. Now you can close the size of your mouth so that the fibers won't lift up too far ahead, but not having a chip breaker on there is really detrimental. Whereas if I bring in my high angle bevel up plane that has been tuned within an inch of its life, I can get a really nice clean cut, and you can hear the difference. It's got a nice zippy sound to it. Even through this rough grain, take at it for a little bit, I can take this back down to something that's nice and smooth right off of the plane. And you can see after a few quick passes here, I've gotten rid of most all of the tear out being able to use this. Even with the high angle cutter in here, I'm not going to be getting as good work as I am going to be getting with this one because I can really customize this and shape it to get a glass smooth surface on even the most difficult woods. 
But that being said, let's look at one more thing where this really makes a big difference. Here I have white oak standing up in grain, and so this is actually one of the most difficult ways to cut. Uh, and so with a, with a high angle plane, you have basically a chisel coming through here, and it's at a high angle like this, and so it's, it has more of a chance to jitter. It takes a lot of setting up to make it actually work well on here. Whereas if I were to flip it down like this and put the chisel at an angle this way, there's less chance of vibration and more chance of just slicing through all the fibers that are standing up. So yes, I have taken the time and I can set up this plane. And I can do it, but you can see it's kind of bouncing. I'm still getting really nice clean cuts and I'm working at it, getting these beautiful ingrain shavings. But if I bring over this one, which I really haven't spent much of any time on, I can put it on here and go, and you can hear the difference. I'm taking a heavier cut, so I'm actually taking off a lot more material. I'm getting these stronger shavings of ingrain all the way across. And this is really, really shining. And this is just doing one strip of it. If I had an entire butcher block that was wide as well as long, this would just completely outstrip a high angle plane. And that's why for me, my shooting board is actually set up to fit my low angle plane. And so for this, I can trim off ingrain really quickly and really easily because I really don't have to fiddle with setting this up to do ingrain. It just does it really well. So let's draw a few conclusions here between the low angle and the high angle plane. Which one is better? Well, neither one is better. They both have things that they do well at and they both have things that they don't do well at. If you are a new person to hand tools and you're trying to figure them out, sometimes getting a low angle bevel up plane is really smart because there isn't a lot on this you can mess up. They're quick and easy to set up. You can switch out the blades and you can progress on these very quickly without having to learn a lot of the skills that go into some of the more fancy hand planes. But if you've been working with hand tools for a while and you're looking for that next challenge and something that's a little bit more difficult, Working with one of these can be an incredible pleasure because once you actually get them set up and fine-tuned, they feel amazing and they can do some really cool things with figured woods that you just can't do with a low angle. Even with a high angle iron in there, it's still limited in comparison to what it can do with a traditional plane. Now the correct answer to the argument is you need both of them. Um, because, well, you can't ever have enough tools, so you might as well go ahead and get both. <laughs> um, but that being said, you know, if you only need one or the other, either of these will do all of the tasks. Either of these will work as a standalone plane and do all of your planing work. But if you're doing a lot of specialty in one direction or the other, you may be better off with one or the other. And in the end, it really comes down to a personal preference. Which one do you find? Do you want something that takes less setup time and is a little bit quicker and easier, but may not be as customizable? Well, then you might want to go with a low angle bevel up plane. If you want something with all the bells and whistles and ways to customize it and shape it down and make it exactly what you want, then you're probably going to want a high angle bevel down plane. And for some reason, this topic brings up a lot of arguments in the hand tool world. And I don't want it to be that way because there really is no right answer when it comes to hand tools. And it doesn't matter about what topic you're talking about. There is no best way to do woodworking. There's just the way that works for you. And find something that works for you. Find something that fits your style. And that's why I encourage people to experiment. Play with different things. Try different methods. Try different tools. Find something that works for you because every person out there is very different. Every person's going to have different things that they like. Every person's going to have different things that they enjoy. So don't worry about what one personality or another person on YouTube who is saying because you are a different person and you might find that you like something a little bit different. So I hope this has answered a few questions for you and put a little bit of this debate to bed. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you probably have realized this is the third time I've covered this topic and given an entire video over to it. And that's because for some reason, this keeps bringing up arguments. So I wanted to do a little bit more detailed video today and show some of the differences in action. Um, I hope that works for you and I hope that helps you out. So if you did enjoy the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Those things really do help out the channel and they help us grow and reach more people. Thank you for that. Also, if you have any particular thoughts or ideas or something you think I missed, let me know those down below. I'd love to read that. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So I've got a bevel up plane and I've got a bevel down plane. Now I need a bevel sideways plane. Oh, oh wait, I've got one of those. It's called a side rabbit plane. <laughs>